Okay, welcome everybody. I just realized I didn't have my microphone attached to me, but it is plugged in and I hope you can hear me. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if you cannot hear me. Welcome to Paris, so to speak. Uh, number 81 here, very excited. Um, quite a nice day here, even though it was supposed to rain, by the way. Let me show you. Again, I'm coming to you from my own backyard. It's still 2020 and we're still all at home. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe wherever you are, staying occupied and inspired. And I certainly am. A uh, little bit of a headache today. Some of you who are longtime followers know that that's something that I deal with sometimes. But as usual, I'm going to try to muster up the excitement and the adrenaline, uh, which isn't too hard when I start talking about Paris. But if you don't see the same twinkle in my eye, then that's the explanation. Thank you, everybody. I can see well over 100 of you here live, and we're going to wait just a, a few more seconds uh, so everybody can get caught up, everybody who wants to be in Paris today. Um, this is a good time for me to remind you um, there are a couple of ways that you can help me out here. The first two don't cost you anything. You can click like on this uh, video right now on YouTube, which helps YouTube to spread it around. And you can also share. You can click on the share right now if you wish and share it in any way you like. Um, preferably with somebody who you think might need a little bit of Paris dreaming today, as we all do from time to time, at least I do. And, um, and then other ways you can do uh, support me, which are not quite as free. You can become a Patreon supporter, and you'll find a link to that in the description. I know most of you already are, but we always have some newcomers, and you'll get perks and rewards and extra Paris content. And um, the other way is the Super Chats. You'll see that, as some of you know, the dollar sign next to where you're chatting. And during this broadcast, you can fire off an instant donation if you wish. Ah, there, we'll speak of the devil, Christina Consolet. She is reminding us that there's a book club today, uh, our private book club for patrons, for Patreon members, and it's at 12 p.m. Eastern. So thank you, Christina, for that reminder. See, those uh, super chats are useful because otherwise, Christina, I always forget to remind people of that. So um, yeah, join Christina in our private um, in private groups. You can contact her and she's hosting a live discussion via Zoom. Um, so there we go. Let's get started. Today, it's called Cloister Quests and Historic Hospitals. I think it's a good time to give a shout out to the hospitals and the hospital workers and the healthcare providers and all of that. And um, those are the real heroes right now, for sure, without a doubt. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And so maybe that's what kind of swayed me toward this idea of some hospitals that I have in mind that are historic and old and beautiful. And um, hopefully there'll be some discoveries for you. You know, part of my goal is to always show you bits of the city that you may not have noticed or, or found yet. And so that's really going to be fun. I can see Leslie T already sending me a super chat donation. Thank you so much, Leslie. I appreciate that. She's saying she's so grateful for these weekly chats. And I'm grateful for you, Leslie. Um, Ellen Corradini, thank you so much for your uh, donation. She says she's looking forward to, to today's tour. Now, we know Paris is beautiful. We know there are little hidden uh, nooks and crannies and great history and architecture. But sometimes the best stuff happens behind the gates and the walls of the old hospitals of Paris. And that's what we're going to explore today. And um, these are places that I discovered either by accident or because I heard about them and I found my way in. So I think that's about it. Let's just jump right in. I know you're all here chomping at the bit. So great to have you. I really appreciate it. So from my backyard, here we go, another home edition of my Paris Live series. Let me pull up the start of our presentation, as it were. Now, I want you to imagine that you are floating above the Luxembourg Gardens here in the 6th arrondissement, which I sometimes like to do. And if you zoom your way down south across, down that leafy concourse across the boulevard, uh, Saint-Michel, you're going to arrive at this spot. It's not too far at all from the Luxembourg Gardens. Back when this area here was outside of Paris, 17th century for example, this was all the section of the 14th arrondissement, was all rolling hills of countryside. Okay, it was pastures, it was orchards, it was little tributaries running through. And in the 17th century there was a convent right here. And the convent was for the nuns of the Order of the Blessed Sacrament. It was built in 1626, and in the center of your screen, you can see just right here, let me pull this up here, right there is where we're headed today. And in 1686, these nuns, it was called the, it was an abbey. It was called the Abbey of the Port Royal, which this neighborhood is named for today. Uh, it's what it's called today. And they built this uh, abbey here for the growing diocese of Southern 
Paris, and it would become one of the city's hubs of religious thinking, often visited by prominent philosophers and scientists of that era. Today it's a hospital. It's called the Hôpital Cochin. Not to be confused with cochon, which is the French word for pig, but this is the Hôpital Cochin. And as you arrive here, what happens is uh, the, the entrance is a little bit deceiving when you arrive at the hospital. And you can see it right here. I pulled this up from Google Maps Street View. And you can see the entrance of the Hôpital Cochin is not particularly inviting and it doesn't necessarily suggest that there's something beautiful uh, inside. And, but it, there absolutely is. And so what I want you to, uh, what I'm, we're gonna do, you can kind of tell on the left-hand side that there's a bit of an old building. So if you come through here, and in fact, most hospitals, uh, all you have to do is a quick bag check, or sometimes they don't even ask you, they don't even bother um, to ask why you're there. It's a, it's a public hospital. People come in and out every day. So when you go through there, there's an absolute hidden universe waiting for you in through there to the left. I'm gonna show you here. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Let's just meditate on that for a minute. Oh my goodness, the super chats are coming in. Fast and furious, that's amazing. Thank you, Joyce Adams, I appreciate it. John Hederman says, thanks for still bringing Paris to us. Um, Tana Morris, hi Tana, and I hope Matthew's doing well. Shout out to you, Matthew. Um, thinking of you, buddy, and hope you're doing well. And uh, so amazing, so amazing. So let's look at this here. We've got, uh, this part of the hospital is a former cloister of the Abbey, l'Abbé de, de Port-Royal from the 17th century. And personally, I'm always on the lookout for a really good cloister. Um, I didn't really know what they were until I came to France. And I consider myself lucky whenever I find one. They always feel like very pr protected spaces, right? In their own little world, like their own little universe. And the garden and the architecture play off of each other in a wonderful way. It's very, very calming. So you can imagine how tickled I was when I discovered this one. Um, and luckily, I took a bunch of photos. So. That's why we're here, right? So let me show you and pull up some other views here. We're gonna get real in depth. So what was a cloister um, of an abbey? It was a monastic space that was used by the resident clergy members, um, going back to the Middle Ages period and even further back. And traditionally it was a square courtyard or a garden surrounded by arcaded walkways and there was a fountain or a well in the center. And they were used for prayer and the meditation of scriptures, reading and relaxation for the monks and the nuns and whatnot. Or occasional ceremonies and, and processions as well. And hopefully you can already see right away that it's just an absolute stunning space. And we're going to pause here for a moment. I'm going to check in on the comments and make sure you're all doing well. Everyone's saying some bonjour from California and bonjour from all around the world. Fantastic. Hi, Missy Lamb is here as well. Jennifer Robinson says that's a view worth making yourself sick for. Yeah, Jennifer, I mean, if you have to be sick these days, uh, come to a hospital like this. Absolutely just gorgeous. Now, the arcades go all the way around a cloister, and they encourage you to, to roam around and, and observe the space from all different perspectives, and so that's what we're going to do here today. This is the former Abbey of the Port Royal, today a hospital. Shelley Gruen says it's still in use today. It's in use, it's in use as a hospital. There are administrative offices of the current hospital today, um, but it's not a religious uh, complex anymore. But you would never know from the street, right? Which is so, so common in these spaces. Beautiful statues. Cheryl Matzker says her favorite cloister is the one at Mont Saint-Michel. Pat Hallam's asking if the patients can sit here. Yes, patients and hospital workers as well. So we're going to go inside and, and upstairs. I took this little close-up of wrought iron handle, and then I was like a good photo through a dirty old window. And then we'll make our way upstairs for some slightly different views of the property. This gentleman here, we're going to pause for a second. There's a bust of a priest from Paris. His name was Jean-Denis Cochin. 
And Koshan is, of course, what the hospitals, uh, he's who the hospitals named after today. He was a priest in Paris who founded in the year 1780 a hospice here uh, to, on the spot to welcome the poor who needed medical attention, particularly laborers of the nearby stone quarries who were suf suffering from respiratory ailments. So Koshan was quite a philanthropic figure. And that original, I'll zoom in on his face here, that original, uh, original sorry, hospice or hospital by Cochin only had 38 beds, but it was still an extraordinary uh, humanitarian effort uh, by this priest. And today's hospital is essentially a continuation of what he started at the Abbey. Thank you, Drew, Drew Jones, for sending a generous um, super chat. I appreciate that. Let's get, let's move on and make our way upstairs. So these are views from just the second floor. You can see we're elevated a little bit. You can see some, some workers there, um, hospital personnel, just taking a break as the nuns would have done a few hundred years ago. But just, this is why I will never, my addiction to Paris will never cease because just when you think you've kind of gotten a grasp on all of the the hidden beauty of the city, it will always, always surprise you. And I know a lot of you know that, and that's what keeps you coming to the city. Here, I decided just to zoom in on some details, hanging out of the window. Don't worry, I didn't fall. And just the old flaked paint, which I like to get up close and personal with. And some of this, um, they call that flashing. I don't know enough about roofing, but that beautiful zinc metal that they fold around every nook and cranny. And then here you see they reinforced the shutters with iron. And I thought that that was noteworthy. Lisa Cruz says, Paris has a grasp on us. Boy, isn't that the truth, Lisa? So we're going to make our way outside, across to the other side, beyond the Abbey. That's where I'm taking you now. And there's a, a nice little leafy space out here. And these buildings are all part of the hospital as well. Um, I see your comments there, Juan, and um, I'm, my heart goes out to you, sending uh, my thoughts your way. Sorry to hear that news. And um, I'll, be, I'll be toasting to you and your, and your family uh, during this chat, for sure, during the, our champagne chat. But I'm glad you're here, Juan. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it a lot. Here we're going to pause on the chapel. There are always chapels, of course, connected to abbeys, and chapels were very useful in, in hospital spaces as well. This one was built by an architect uh, by the name of Antoine Le Poutre. And you may not recognize that name. I, I didn't necessarily either. Um, but he built a, a building in the Marais that some of you know and love. It was called the Hôtel de Beauvais. It still is called the Hôtel de Beauvais. And if you've taken my tour of the Marais, my walking tour in person, uh, I likely took you inside the courtyard there. I also mentioned it on a podcast a few years back. The Hôtel de Beauvais on the, the rue uh, François Miron is, is a, a beloved old hôtel particulier. And that same architect built this chapel here. There's no access inside this chapel as far as I could see when I was there. Uh, but apparently it was quite lovely inside. It used to be adorned with illustrious paintings that were so nice that they've since been transferred to the Louvre and other major museums. Um, as beautiful works of art in their own right. Um, so if anybody manages to get into this chapel, uh, you let me know. And we'll zoom in a little bit um, further on the, the chapel building before we make our way back into the cloister. Yeah, thinking of you, Juan. Hope you're doing okay, buddy. Hope you're hanging in there. Really fantastic freedom follower, Juan Alba. You can see the crown of thorns here um, on the door and then the beautiful ironwork. That I, at first I thought that said Varitas, but it says uh, Charitas, or Charitas, the Latin word for charity. And I just love that ironwork there. Absolutely stunning. One last look at the chapel building, and then we'll finish up by popping our way back under the archways into the cloister and say goodbye to the Hôpital Cochin.
Angela Johnson says that door is fantastic. <laughs> Jennifer Robinson always makes me laugh. She typed in hashtag chapel challenge. Who can get into the closed off chapel? So we're gonna pause here where we started. Absolutely love it. You can just imagine how giddy I was when I found this and I hope that some of you can, can uh, enjoy this as well. And this is the first of a handful of old hospitals that we're going to uh, ponder today and enjoy. Now, one last thing before we leave here, the, the former Abbey, Abbey de Port Royal. The way that you leave or you come here by RER, if you were to use the RER station, it's right here, almost across the street from the hospital. And you can see it's called, the station's called Port Royal. And it's just an absolute stunner. I mean, not all metro or RER stations are, are created equal or were created equal. And you can see the ironwork there. It's just stunning. Now to the left here, um, in the distance on the left is towards the Luxembourg Gardens. So we are very, very close. So hopefully this is a bit of a discovery for some of you. And you can see here I did um, a view inside the, the lattice work of the same station. Port Royal. That's the RER B. So now we're going to cross over the Seine River northward, northeast, over to Père Lachaise. And here we are, we're flying over Père Lachaise Cemetery. Beautiful spot, of course. We've got the square called the Place Gambetta and a cute little park. And now we're going to focus on another hospital you can see in the center of your screen called the Hôpital Tunon. We're in the 20th arrondissement here. And um, again, the entrance of this one is a bit deceiving. You can already see there's something beautiful going on in there. You know, so much of Paris is four walls enclosing a garden or a courtyard or a cloister. There's still so much of that when you look from a, from a bird's eye view. So again, the entrance to this hospital, it's called Tunon, T-E-N-O-N. Once again, not exactly tipping you off to what's beyond those doors, but um, again, when I arrived here, uh, they just checked my bag really quick, no questions asked, and you just go in and you're respectful and you're allowed to enjoy these spaces. Um, and the spaces are lovely, so we're going to make our way through the arches here and you're going to see right away. Oh my goodness. We'll talk about that chapel a little bit later. Andrea Robles Miles says, Corey, this is fantastic. Thank you, Andrea. I'm glad to have you here, as always. So I'm just going to shut up a little bit. And we're going to meander our way through the space. This is 1870, right as the Prussians were about to besiege the city. So in this hospital, again, built 1870, but later in 1915, a little baby girl was born here in this building by the name of Edith Piaf. And for that reason, there's a large mural of her painted on an exterior wall of this same complex facing the street. There's also a square just behind this hospital called the Place Edith Piaf, a little square. Uh, however, there were two, two versions of her, the story of her birth. Either she was born here in the hospital traditionally, or according to local legend, she was in fact born down the street a little bit, just right here. Let me show you. Different kind of vibe. <laughs> this is number 72, Rue de Belleville, in the 20th arrondissement. And local legend would have it, according to some accounts, that Edith Piaf was born just right here on the stoop of her building. A teenage mother, and according to that story, um, the, m her mom didn't have enough time to get to the hospital, and so, oop, you know, uh, Edith popped right out here in front of the doorway. You can see uh, towards the upper left of the door that a street artist put a little portrait of Edith there. And this sort of rough around the edges, sort of shabby chic vibe that you see in this image is pretty much what a lot of Bel Belleville offers these days. Um, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it is certainly a, a certain version of local Paris. And there, there are a lot of artists around here and um, folks doing interesting things and little um, leafy courtyards and alleyways and whatnot. So either she was born there or 
most likely she was born here at the hospital, but you can kind of choose which one. I don't know if that urban legend has, has ever been officially debunked or not. So this is the Hôpital Tunnel. Uh, now I will put, I already put all the addresses in the description of this video, so you will find out where all of these addresses are if you wish to find them yourself, which is part of the goal. Thank you so much, so much to you, Carol Amick, for the super chat. Really appreciate that. <laughs> I see, I see Missy Lamb just asked, wasn't her mother a prostitute? And I think it was, the, the comment was held uh, by YouTube or held by somebody. Um, for being improper. Um, I don't think that's the case, Missy. I don't want to commit to that. Um, she was raised by women um, of that ilk because her grandmother had a, um, a brothel. So that was part of her story. As for her mother herself, I'm not sure. I don't want to venture to take a guess. Here we see the chapel um, from the, the Hôpital Tunnel. And luckily, this chapel you can get into. So the chapel challenge, Jennifer Robinson, here is, is much easier. And of course, I snapped some photos inside. And it's, it's quite lovely in its own right. And still being used today. Beautiful little altar. And of course, nobody's ever in these spaces other than the, the workers and the patients themselves. So they're sort of just waiting there for you to, to come and enjoy a quiet, meditative moment. So I think that's it for this one, the Hôpital Tournon in the 20th arrondissement, just steps from Père Lachaise. I encourage you to go take a look one day. And what's up next? Well, next is a fun one. The next one isn't exactly a historic hospital, but it's a, ho a modern hospital built on the site of something historic, and there are some leftovers. So it's called the Hôpital Broca, and we're going back across the river to the 13th arrondissement. And the Hôpital Broca doesn't look like much from the south, but if you zoom in here on the, the garden, Can you see that in the middle of your screen? There's a beautiful old hunk of stone, a ruin from an old convent. It's called the Convent of the Cordelière, which was a, a religious outfit started in the year 1289. And uh, it was a big one. It was spread out across huge swaths of the, what is now the 13th arrondissement. So you can see it there digitally via Google Earth. I was there in person, and these are some of the photos that I took, and you can see it right there. So a few morsels, so to speak. <laughs> I didn't expect to use that word, but it works. A few morsels of the convent from the Middle Ages uh, were spared, and they pl propped them up here against, as you can see, the very modern hospital, the Hôpital Broca. Now I want to show you, I've got this beautiful map of the 1730s in Paris. And right in the center of your screen, you can see this was the previous convent where the, the hospital is today. So these places were enormous, by the way, because it's not just the, the buildings that you see in the middle, but we're talking, sorry, we're talking, let me pull up my little drawing tool, all around, like here and here. I can't even see my screen very good, but very well. So yeah, hopefully that all of that in the walled-in area is where they had their convent starting in the 13th century. So today there are leftovers of what apparently are a piece of the dormitory right there and a piece of this church, what I think is probably a piece of the nave of this church. And the street that I'm taking most of my photos from, it's called the Rue de Julienne, 
and it runs essentially through like uh, I can't get rid of this anyway that's not working for me because the comments are in the way but anyway I'll figure this technology out eventually so it later became you know the revolution took over this spot and it later became a modern hospital they parts you know parceled out the land and whatnot um, so this structure here I believe is is a combination of two different things again there they, they were pieces of the the convent that were spared and kind of piecemealed together to create a structure so here at the top it's from the church you can see those beautiful gothic bay windows and they would have been filled with glass originally and then on the bottom half um, it's part of the dormitory and what they did now as you can see they put benches inside of the arches of the dormitory and so those are the two leftovers and there are some others that we'll talk about in a moment but I, I decided to pull up um, a, an image here of an old medieval dormitory because you can see the arches oops sorry you can see the arches there and how they um, are still there essentially where the beds would be placed in so this is a space again where the patients uh, can spend their time Thanks, David Dubois, for the super chat. Much appreci appreciated, my friend. Thank you for being here with us. I'm really happy to have you. So these little cobbled pathways here uh, aren't random. There's something really cool that happened when they were um, rehabilitating this area and putting a modern hospital in. Uh, there was a, an architect who created to, or chose rather, to create cobblestone paths to map out the outline of the original medieval church that we just talked about. So if you switch to a, a satellite view of this spot, you can see that, uh, I'm going to try to draw this for you, in fact, if I, can, if I can do it without screwing up. The paths mark essentially that shape no, not too bad considering my big old finger on this screen and um, so you can see that what's great is those pathways outline outline clearly the, the chapel or the church of this convent of the Cordeliers what we also can see perhaps this right here do you see sorry Ugh. I need a bigger screen for this to be honest let me pull this up again all right right here do you see there's a square shape? That may uh, be the leftover of the old cloister. It may outline where the square cloister would have been in, in the convent, and I think that's pretty cool as well. While we're looking at this satellite view, hopefully you've got um, your, your video quality, uh, your settings turned up to 1080p so you can get an, uh, the, the most crisp image as possible. But right here, do you see there are a series of little dots, these little specks on the satellite? I'm going to show you what those were. They're actually pillars, old stone pillars, perhaps from the cloister, that were relocated and transferred. And they're just kind of hanging out there, which I'll show you here. I, this is not my photo, but I pulled this off of a, a book of mine. So that's actually a, a laboratory, a modern laboratory um, on this property for the hospital. And then these pillars, perhaps from the cloister, I hope so. Because again, this is called cloister quests and historic hospitals, after all. And again, you can see the, the pathways here a, a little bit better. And these were, this is the outline of that church. What we see on the right-hand side would have been running along the nave as you entered. And then that piece coming off towards the bottom left would have been part of the transept. Thank you, Laura Poffenberger, for the generous uh, super chat. I appreciate that. And a little bit more of meandering through this space.
again, if you've got to be in the hospital, you can't, I mean, you're doing pretty well for yourself if you end up in one of these spaces. Could be a lot worse. Thank you, Christine Stevens. Just sent me a super chat. I really appreciate that. You're all so generous and wonderful. I'm really feeling the love over here. Thank you, Christine. All right, so that, those are our ruins in the 13th arrondissement Hôpital Broca. And I want to send you to one more historic hospital. Um, so we've got the ruins here. If we go back to our Google Earth view, you're going to see the ruins just right there in the little garden. And if we turn ourselves northward, we're going to zip our way up towards the Seine northeast toward this beauty. This one is a bit of a mouthful to say. This is the Hôpital Pitié Salpêtrière. <laughs> one more time for you. The Hôpital Pitié Salpêtrière. And the previous function of what was in this area long ago is actually embedded in that very difficult name because the word salpetriere refers to a uh, gunpowder and explosives factory where they would manufacture that stuff. Um, and so saltpeter, by the way, comes from that word, salpetriere. Uh, it's no longer that, of course, because Louis XIV came along, King Louis, converted this, um, it became a hospital, but then it was converted into a, a women's prison for a while, particularly for ladies caught practicing the oldest perfect profession, as Missy Lamb was referencing earlier. And um, in fact, in the 17th century, when I don't know if you've heard about this, but when French populations over in Canada were dwindling, Louis XIV sent over 300 women to Quebec to essentially mingle with the guys there and create relationships and bear children and start families and get the, the French population going in Canada. Um, those, those women were named as, uh, known as rather Les Filles du Roi, the girls of the king, and apparently he financed that and their dowries and everything, and he wanted to marry them off. Well, apparently, out of those over 300 women, about 75% of them came from this prison. And um, that's how they got going in, in, in Quebec. Today it's a hospital, and I've got a few pictures. Here's first a very wide, spanning one. Thank you, Terry McGilvray, for your super chat. She said, I made masks for nurses, and this was their donation, and I'm paying it forward. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm honored to receive that donation. Thank you. So if we come to back to our Google Earth view, um, the photos that I just showed you, pretty much all I have, because I was foolish, and I didn't realize that all of this was back here. So what I did was I entered right there and then I made my way there and I stopped and I had no idea that not only the this beautiful architecture of the hospital but apparently some some buildings of the former prison are back there as well so there are plenty of discoveries for me as a tour guide even you know someone who claims to know Paris and that's what's exciting of course that's what gets me out of bed in the morning thanks Ricky Beltran for that um, donation. I appreciate it. So I did not uh, get photos of what's beyond there. Maybe one day I will, and I'll surely share that with you. But what I did get a photo of is looking back this way at the entrance. This is how you enter the hospital. And so let me pull that up for you now. Because that's it's quite a lovely little pavilion, the way that you make your way into this property. Look at that. Everything was done with such class. And there's a statue. I also photographed this statue. And we'll zoom in a little bit here. You can see he's got these beautiful flowers. His name was Philippe Pinel, and he was a chief physician starting here in 1795 at this hospital. He specialized in psychology, worked with patients with mental illnesses, and he believed in treating them first with cognitive and behavioral methods instead of immediately just pumping them full of opium and other hard drugs which so many other doctors were were, were often doing and so he really was a, a psychiatrist who really believed in getting to the root of the problem and hopefully changing and helping these people um, mentally before just pumping them with drugs and so he's he's known for that and you can see Pinel gets a lot of respect because the staff or perhaps interns um, still decorate the statue with these fresh flowers and I think that was pretty pretty great so there we go. There are four historic hotels, or sorry, hospitals, 
pardon me. Um, four historic hospitals, and I hope that you enjoyed them. I hope that they are discoveries and, and, and new for some of you, because that's part of the fun here. That's why we're, we're showing up each week. Um, as I did last week with the courtyards, though, I wanted to throw just a couple of bonus picks in for you. And so here we go, because I hate to say goodbye, right? So here are a couple, a couple of bonus ones. This one right here, I just have the one photo, but it's from the 14th arrondissement, just down the street from the catacombs. It's called the Hôpital La Rochefoucauld. La Rochefoucauld. And I don't know a ton about this property. Again, I, I, I hope to go and explore it a bit more. But you can see it's just another reminder that these hospitals were absolute stunners, just absolutely dynamite. And I want to appreciate Janet Wamble, who just sent a, a super chat as well. You're all very lovely. And then some of you finally may maybe you know, talking to your screen and saying, dude, how can you talk about the historic hospitals of Paris without mentioning Hotel Dieu across from Notre Dame? And I, I will just throw in one little panorama here of the Hotel Dieu. This is absolutely beautiful. And the reason I didn't include it in this episode, certainly fits into the category, is because I'm holding off because I, I have an idea for this, uh, another episode that will include the Hotel Dieu. So for those of you who wanted to we're hoping to hear about it or see photos of it. Here you go. And it's just steps from Notre Dame. And again, you can walk right in. Well, don't try that right now. But <laughs> when the world is right and the world is normal, you'll be able to, um, to walk right into the Hotel Dieu. And that'll be for another, another time, another episode. So here I am back. I am still in my backyard. It was supposed to rain today. I even brought this just in case, but it turned out to be blue skies and fluffy clouds and absolutely gorgeous. So I want to thank you all for your, ooh, it's getting bright. I want to thank you all for your support and your attention and share this with anybody who you think might need a little bit of uh, Paris dreaming. I've still got my quarantine quaff here. I'm growing out my hair as long as the confinement uh, and the lockdown exists. And if you can't bring yourself to Paris, I'm going to keep bringing it to you. Now, you can support me on Patreon if you wish and get private content, including what we're about to do with my patrons. Sorry. I'm going to have a champagne chat or perhaps this time a uh, sparkling cider chat with some goodies. Do a little Q&A and I'll bring my, my daughter on. And um, I set up a little show and tell of my daughter, Taya, where she's going to show you some, some of her favorite objects that she's been building during the quarantine. Danielle Molden sending in a super chat. She is saying, in honor of my daughter and her fiance, both nurses. Yes, bravo, round of applause for those folks. Every night at um, 8 p.m. in France, everybody hangs out their windows and their balconies and they clap. And we've been doing that with the girls um, religiously every single night at eight o'clock. Haas Manning, thank you so much for sending a donation. He says, thanks for your dedication. Really appreciate that. Elizabeth comments, says late to the party, but loving the replays and the backyard chats. And uh, who else? I don't want to miss anybody. Andrea Miles, again, says merci with another um, donation. And Mark Vickers, thanks, buddy. He says, as always, a great tour. Okay, so I think that's about it, folks. Um, share this with people. Like it. Watch it over and over. Uh, and that's about it. Become a Patreon member if you wish to do so and you wish to support this venture. I'm going to come back at you next Saturday with another... Oh, my goodness. You know what? I have all the tools I need. Ah, there we go. Cla all classy like. Um, so yeah, another long drawn out goodbye, but you can become a Patreon member for those who are already patrons. Cafe Chats group in about 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna go prep some goodies and we're gonna have a chat. Thanks everybody. Ricky says, I love these photos and I hope you stay healthy in here, healthy up here. And I will catch you on the next one. If you can't bring yourself to Paris, I'm going to keep bringing it to you. Take care, everybody. Have a lovely day. Stay safe.